So let's take a look at this ATP, this molecule that cells use as an energy source. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. And this is a molecule that's really good at shuttling energy around inside of the cell. It, adenosine triphosphate ha basically has this structure. It's an adenosine group and it has three phosphate groups attached to it. Phosphate groups um, phosphate groups are very electronegative. They are all negatively charged, which means they don't really like to be near each other. So in order to take three phosphate groups and connect them all together, there's a lot of energy stored in these bonds. These things, these phosphate groups, they don't want to be near each other. They're trying to get away from each other. So essentially these bonds are like compressed springs. And if we were to come along with some scissors and cut one of those bonds, uh, what's going to happen is this phosphate group is going to go flying off in the other direction. It's going to release a lot of energy if we were to sever that bond. And that's exactly what the cell does. It takes a molecule of ATP and it cleaves off phosphate groups one at a time. So this one comes flying off and in the process this releases a lot of energy that the cell can use for work. This energy could literally be used to move something. Um, come back to the proton pump example. The cell might want to move something from one side of the membrane to the other. This would be a molecule that would allow that to happen. In the end uh, what we've ended up with is a molecule of adenosine diphosphate, ADP, over here, and a free phosphate group. And here's the neat thing, the cell can actually recycle. It can take these things and reconnect them back together. And the way that our cells do that is by using energy from fuel molecules. Okay, so a glucose molecule, if we were to, to burn a glucose molecule, what we could do with that is reconnect these together. So that kind of completes the cycle. In large part, this chapter is going to be, the rest of this chapter is going to be focused on cellular respiration. Um, or rather, I should say the rest of this module it depends on which textbook you're looking at as far as which chapter. Uh, so cellular respiration, this is the process by which cells can build ATP molecules. So we'll be elaborating on this shortly. Reactions like this, when the cell is trying to connect some things together or sever some things, um, a lot of times these sorts of reactions are powered by enzymes. And there are lots of different reactions that take place in cells all the time. All the reactions put together are called metabolism. When we talk about metabolism, that's just referencing all the chemical reactions that are taking place. Most are facilitated by an enzyme. We've learned about enzymes in passing. They're an example of a protein. And enzymes are, are special molecules that can facilitate reactions. They can speed up the rate at which a reaction takes place. Uh, but in the process, the enzyme is unharmed. It's unfazed. It doesn't get used up or anything. So enzymes can function over and over again um, to promote the same reaction over and over again. Enzymes are very specific. They only, each one, only catalyzes one specific reaction. And the way that they do that is, let's take a look at the structure. So here's a schematic of an enzyme right here. Notice it has a particular cutout shape up at the top. This is called the active site of the enzyme. That's the section that is able to recognize uh, some other molecule. And that other molecule is called the substrate. Okay, so the enzyme has an active site and that active site recognizes a substrate. The substrate has kind of a natural fit with that active site. You can see that here just in the schematic. So it kind of nestles down in. And then um, once they are all connected, once they've formed a complex, then the enzyme can make some kind of a reaction happen. So maybe it would cleave a bond right there, separate those two things. And finally, in the end, it would release these products. These would be called products of the reaction. Enzymes in cells can be modified. If the cell uh, perhaps no longer needs these products to be produced, then what can happen is this enzyme can be turned off. There are inhibitors, enzyme inhibitors, that can deactivate the enzyme. Either they might come over and block the active site, or they might bind to the enzyme somewhere else and just kind of cause a shape change to happen, which would, again, deactivate the active site. Remember, with proteins, it's all about 3D structure. The structure is what dictates the function. So if we can modify that 3D shape, 
we would modify what the what the protein does. In this case, that protein is an enzyme, so it would stop to stop working, stop catalyzing that reaction.